Hi guys, thanks for joining me. This tutorial is going to be a step-by-step how-to on making the Beautiful Buttercup uh, project. This is a new template set that we've just brought out and it's I think it's one of my favourites. I have to admit, it, I, I really do love it. Um, it's been in process for a little while. It's taken me a little while to get all of the templates correct for you guys, but I'm really happy with the results. So as always, I'm going to quickly run through all the tools, equipments and stuff that I'm going to be using and then we'll jump straight in and make our beautiful buttercup. I'm going to be working on my foam mat. I've then got my flat mat and my felt topper. I will be using my 40 spiral and my 38 spiral needle. I've also got my three needle handle. I'm going to be using some pliers and some wire cutters, the template set obviously, and I'm going to be using a part of the armature assistant set which is part C because I'm going to be making some armatures for my leaves so I can get those sort of nice curls on the shapes. You can obviously uh, use whatever um, you have to hand but that's what I'm going to be using. I'm also going to need my awl and my scissors. In terms of materials you're going to need some 24 gauge wires. I'm going to be using our moss green florist tape. The fluff that I'll be using is our bright yellow and our moss and that is pretty much it for the entire project. Oh of course and pride of place over here my little pocket scale. Pocket scales, if you don't know, are very, very good for weighing out very small increments of wool. And when you're dealing with such small templates, it's absolutely ideal for making sure you get lovely, consistent results. That's it. That's everything that I'm going to be using. So let's jump straight in and start making our beautiful buttercup. The first thing I'm going to make is the flower head. And I'm going to be using our bright yellow. To make the here's one. To make the whole flower head uh, will be about 0 0.45, 0 0.5 grams. Yeah, sort of around that. And obviously, there's five petals, so the ratio is you're going to use about 0 0.1 of a gram in each of the petals. So I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to pull off. There's 0.1. My pocket scale is just over there. <laughs> 0.1. And 0.1. And that's... So what we're going to do is lay the fibres down and then obviously create some overlap in the middle. And the weights and measures will also be on the website um, under projects, infos and downloads you'll find a whole uh, a list of all of the weights for all of the templates that we do. I'm just going to pop that to one side. So there's my 0.1. I'm just going to pull off a little bit more. I feel that's a little bit, might have gone over, but there's my 0.1. With a lot of the templates, you want to sort of concentrate on the edges. So that's um, particularly in such a small, delicate flower. And the way that I do that is I fold back just a little bit on that end. And so we've got those rolled fibres. And then put that rolled edge down into the edge of the petal, the sort of the outside edge of the petal. Then bring a little bit of fluff in. And I'm very, very light. I'm using my 40 spiral, my lightest needle. And I'm just really, really lightly going over it. You know, I'm not, uh, if this is one of, one of the first tutorials that you're watching with me, you just want to pierce the very top of your surface. You don't want to be, if you're hearing this, you're going way too hard. And what will happen is all of this fluff on the bottom will come out and stick into your mat and you'll end up with a very pretty buttercup 
permanently attached to your surface. <laughs> this is one of the reasons I do, uh, I absolutely love my flat mat. You can see it under here. And then I use the felt topper because that denseness, that real sort of weight of the flat mat means you can, you can feel when you need to stop. So I'm just going to go all over that little petal, not too hard. And I'm just wiggling my petal or my template so that it doesn't stick to my surface. You will get some adhesion, that's, that's going to happen. But as this firms up, it will stick less to the mat anyway. So I've got my next little bit of yellow. I'm going to fold back that edge. And if you can see, if I was just to put it in, you've got all of these sort of frizzy bits that are just pointing all haywire. But by just turning back that little bit, do you see how you instantly get a much neater sort of edge? And it's all about just giving ourselves the best possible start makes less work for us. And I'm all for less work. <laughs> So what I'm doing now is just putting the second, the second one in. Nice vertical needle, nice and light. You don't need to use all of the needle, I'm just using my tip. And then I've got that overlap in the middle. So, a little bit of a wiggle. And all I've done at the moment is just get these fibres down. And the weights and measures are a guide. Um, they're not set in stone if you find that you don't use quite as much, if you find that you use a little bit more. It's absolutely fine. They are just a good starting point. So because I've got quite a bit of frizz here, I'm just going to take off a little bit of that. Because it's much easier to add in more. I'm going to fold back my sort of top what, third maybe and then put that up into that edge. And what we're trying to achieve is just a nice sort of even cover throughout the template. I'm going to allow the frizz from this one to blend out down into the other two petals. That'll give me a good, a good sort of overlap And there, that's all of the fluff down in. Into the template. So now what we do is we just refine and compact and firm up these petals and that is done. I use what I call this compacting technique. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. And the way that I do that is tiny, tiny little stabs. You're just using, uh, where is it? Let me show you. Focus. See that barb right there? That's really the only one that I'm using. Oh no, there it is there. That lowest barb, maybe that one, but you're just using the first barb on the needle. Tiny, tiny little stabs, little circular motion all over sort of every millimeter of the petal and you can see how much that's compacted down just in a few seconds. A little bit of a wiggle onto my next petal. And once you start compacting it down and it really firms up, it will stick a lot less to your mat as well. So that's what I would call my first sort of compacting pass. And then have a look, have a feel in the template. That's a little bit thinner over there than the rest of it. So I'm gonna grab a little bit that I pulled off earlier. And at the moment, I'm not turning it over. I'm keeping to this side. So there, here I've got a little bit less. So I'm just going to fold, fold that back. And 
and this is why your first sort of compacting pass you you don't want to you don't want to felt it down too much you want to make sure that you're felting it down enough that you can identify where you need to put a little bit more fluff but you don't want it rock solid not just yet oops So then I'm just going to go over that bit that I've just added with a with my sort of little compacting technique. Bring it back into line with the rest of the wall. So it's all about the same firmness. There we go. Yeah, I'm much happier with that now. Right, so what we then do. I'm going to use my multi-needle. If you're just starting out with, with templates um, and this project in particular, I, I wouldn't recommend using a, a multi-tool. Um, you certainly wouldn't use a, a punch tool uh, in this template. But I would stick to one needle. I'm going to use my, uh, my handle because it will work a lot quicker for me on camera for you guys. But I'm just using that compacting technique and going all over each petal. And again this one. we're getting to the point where this is really starting to firm up very nicely. The edges are particularly something to go over and again just the first barb or two of my needle. Let me zoom in. Just on that edge. can run round the outsides of the templates and that's going to give you a really nice good edge. Now as I mentioned before I've not yet turned this over and if you have a look at this side you can see that you've got quite a few pit marks from the needle but if you look at this side you can see that it's actually quite a bit smoother and a bit neater and generally I find that particularly on the flat mat uh, I might add that the side that faces the mat does come out very very nicely so what you would have is this this side would be the side that faces you if you had a one, you know, a single sided project. I am going to turn it over now and just run round the edges on the other side. Very, very lightly. And I think sometimes it does feel that if you're only using the tiny tip, it's not doing anything. But it, it really does. This is coming out really quite firmly now. So I'm just going to pop that out of the template. There you go. You can see what a lovely shape. Look at those really nicely defined edges. So that's the three petals. Oh, I've lost my template. Where's it gone? There it is. Now we're going to do the two. So here's the remaining um, 0.1 grams. I'm just going to bring that little bit in that I pulled off as well. <laughs> waste not <laughs> so again that little rolled edge down into the template get those fibers down in nice light needle thicker, roll in that end, 
and pop it down and again good overlap in the middle you want a good overlap but you don't want it too thick you know, don't be tempted to sort of you know have a load of of wool in here nice even covering throughout the template that's what we want to see this will overlap the other part of the petal and then that's what makes that nice sort of little raised bump in the center so that's all of the wool in and then back with that compacting technique with my single needle all over like so I'm just going to check the thickness of my petals that feels pretty good so now I'm going to go ahead and firm this up like I did with the other one and we're aiming for the same firmness with these petals that we had with the three so nice and nice and firm And it's definitely worth just taking your time with these little flower heads. Make sure that they really are nice and firm. I think that's almost there. I'm just going to go back with my single needle around those edges. I am doing this as quickly as I dare. I'll turn it over and go back the other way, just very lightly. And it is something that you get used to working with the templates. So there. There's my my two, there's my three, that's the good side. And just so I can give you the visual, if you can see that this middle section is, it's not dead set in the center, it's offset. And this took me ages to figure out. <laughs> the idea is that you put it that way not that way and the buttercup obviously has the five petals but they're, they're individual petals but they also overlap which posed a creative challenge <laughs> so by doing that that means you get that beautiful classic buttercup shape of individual petals but they also have that slight overlap. So there is your your two bits. So that's put it that way. That's the buttercup head. Now these are going to be wired. Um, or I, I will show you how to wire. If you are making um, the buttercup brooch, which should be in another video on the channel then you wouldn't be wiring it, um, but you would follow that video for the assembly of making the little buttercup brooch. However, um, if you're making the brooch, this is where you would stop with this and then you would go and iron your petals. But we are making, we're making this little arrangement very similar in composition to the Dainty Daisy. And that was my thinking when I did it. I wanted to make the buttercup and the daisy 
so that they could almost form a little trio of, of wildflowers. So I've got to wait and decide which one I'm going to do next. So there's a little hint for you. <laughs> so there, that's that's our, our flower head done. So now what we're going to do is I'm not going to iron this yet because we're going to do the leaves. So I'm going to start with the large leaf and show you um, how we do that one. What I have here is our moss coloured wool and I've weighed out 0.8 grams and this this one is about about 0.8 there are there's a couple of ways that you can do this one is infinitely easier than the other <laughs> but I like to give you all your options <laughs> You can, uh, depending whether or not you're going to wire this, there will be a wire pattern included um, when you purchase the template. There'll be a download for the armature. And if you want to wire it, let me see if I can explain. You want to have support in this middle section, in this section, and sort of in that section there and that way you can get these you can get a good sort of curl on your leaf and it helps give you that amazing kind of uh, sort of on the ground um, what's the word the arc that's the word I was looking for the arc and this template and the there's two leaf templates the large and the small they both have these wiring holes which makes wiring the templates really really easy and with this one in particular you can use just that part you can use just that part and you can use just that part. And using the individual sections as well as the whole leaf, as well as that leaf, and using them in alternate uh, orientations does mean you're going to get a huge variety in your leaf uh, appearances. And that will make the whole thing look a lot more natural. For this little project, what I did was four large leaves and two of these so it's really nice and simple got all of the large ones on the bottom and then a couple of the small ones just sort of fitted in and you can see that the leaves are sort of twisted round and arced up and it just creates that sort of little ground shrub type appearance okay i'm going to start with the big leaf i'm going to show you the whole thing um, i'm going to start by making the wire armature and then you've got two ways you can do it. You can either put in half the wool, layered all over, then put in the armature, then put the other half on top so that the armature is sandwiched in the middle. Or the easier option <laughs> is that you put pretty much all of the wool into the template and then you lay the armature on top Give it a little bit of glue, let the whole thing dry and then just go back and cover the wire with a touch more wool. Then when you come to assemble, you make sure that that's on the underside. And then you've got the nice sort of look on the top. That's what I did with, with most of the ones in that little buttercup arrangement that you see, uh, is I just filled the template. If you're doing something that requires it, then by all means, you separate your wool in half, you lay down half, put in your wire and then you lay down your other half and then you firm it all up together. Those are your two options for doing it depending on your idea for the project. I will be making the, I'll show you how, to, how I make the little leaf armature. What I'm going to very quickly show you on this bit is just how I make um, 
the wire armature. Like as I, I think I mentioned before, there will be a download um, in when you buy the template. You should get a, a, a download pop up. If that that will be on the website, so that's www.mumsmakery.co.uk. So I'll make sure that that's there. So I'm using a 24 gauge wire and I'm using the Part C armature assistant which is 25mm and 35mm. I found that this worked out well. What I'm going to do is just loop my florist wire and put it over the widest part just squish that down so it's nice and tight to the armature assistant and then give it one twist that's all we want is just one so I have to keep my white background so that you can see it <laughs> then what I'm just going to do is just shunt this almost to the end and then using one half I'm going to go up and round the smaller part and then give it one twist. You want to make sure you keep your twists right at the base. Then I'm going to take it off. I'm going to turn it over. I'm just going to pop the armature system just back over that middle one again because now we're coming to the other side. And I just want to use that on that side and then again just that one twist and then twist off the rest of it very loosely and then what you end up with are these three loops which are going a bit haywire but that's okay I generally find that loops um, will service you better in the template. It does negate a bit of glue. If you if you want to use glue, which generally I don't, <laughs> or if you don't have any glue, you know, you're doing something a little bit on the fly or whatever, um, a loop in your creation will hold. So you use the fibres to help hold the wire in place. So that's generally what I do. So I'm going to run that through once more with the close-up camera as well. So here's my, these are 12 inch in case you were wondering. Fold it in half and then pop it over the armature assistant and get a nice tight fold. And then one twist. We just want to hold it in place. We don't want too much going on down there. Shunt it along and then this one is going to come up and over the small side. I'm just going to wrap that again off nice and as tight as you can at the bottom. So that's what we've got, the middle and then one. Then the longer one, I'm just going to take this off and turn it round. Put that back through, move that one out of the way. Move it back through to the other side. And then this one's going to go up and over. There may be an easy way of doing this, an easier way of doing this. Um, if there is, I haven't found it. <laughs> and then when you've got your two ends, just twist them off uh, very loosely. And you end up with your three loops of wire. Now you can, if you want... Just give them a little bit of an extra twist. You may just want to have a little loop up the top 
there's no there's no real right or wrong with this you you may find that not having a loop and just gluing it works for you but like anything it's just worth having a play so you can make them and just have the loop sort of nearer the top if you want a little bit of extra strength there it's entirely up to you what you want to do with that and then for your template just pop the wire down through the wiring hole and voila we have an armature that fits the template pretty darn good I would say so that's how I make the armature you may like I said find a, a, a slightly better way that suits you the way that I'm going to fill the template is I'm going to completely fill it lay the armature down and then just cover it over with some wall to hold it in place the project that we're doing it's it doesn't need to be heavy duty it doesn't need to be robust it just needs to be a little bit supportive so that's what we're going to do we're back with the template and my 0 0.8 grams there's no there's no real weights and measures to this um, this is you have to start to get a feel for it it is one of the more fiddlier templates I will confess but the results are oh they're so lovely so persevere <laughs> it's worth it I promise <laughs> okay so with any of the templates you generally start at the points and you work towards the middle don't try to stuff it in the middle and then bring the fibers out to the outside it it just it doesn't give you that nice crisp kind of edge so what I will do is I'm going to start from here and I'm going to work my way round and obviously when you've got a bigger point you would use slightly more wool and it's going to be a case of having a go so again fold that back I've got my 40 spiral and I'm just going to go down into that point very lightly and it is super lightly you can see that there's barely anything holding it on and obviously make sure you've got that sort of overlapping frizz again just that back curl of wool put that up into the tip And that's our second point done. Slightly bigger bit. Roll back. And I am, again, just using... Come here, there we go. Just using the first two barbs on my needle. There's not much. When you feel the denseness of that mat, it's a great guide. So there's our first section done. I'm going to leave it actually attached to my mat a little bit, so I'm just going to move the template around. So the next one. And don't forget, like, I haven't quite put enough in there. So I'm just going to pull off a tiny touch more, fold it back and just top it up. Again, we're just looking for that even covering. And the next bit. And if your fibres are a bit straggly like that, just spend a moment, pull and stack, pull and stack 
and you'll get a much nicer kind of tuft of fibre up into there. Pull a few more fibres up. There we go. And again, you know, there's very there's actually very little in this part here at the moment, but that's okay. We do the middle last because all of this builds up in the middle. So you don't want to put anything in the middle until you know how much sort of overlap fluff is going to is going to be there. So a little roll back there, a smaller one. Bring it right up into that tip. Very, very light stabs. And then we've got another. See, I've got still got all of this left. And don't worry if you have more left over or you have, um, you know, you have to use a pinch or two more. The weights and measures really are just a guide. It gives you a good place to start. So there's our, I don't need a little bit more in there. That's better. There we go. That's the next section done. You can see on the close-up camera that I've got you know, this is nicely full, but just goes off to nothing, but that's okay. Let's go around to the next part. I realise that on the overhead camera now, this looks completely bonkers. <laughs> My mat's going all over the place. But up into the tip. And the next bit. You just kind of want to get it filled nice and evenly. And it will take a little bit of getting used to. But I think it's like any craft. Once you get the hang of it, you get a feel for it. And I am going to be ironing all of my leaves and my petals. So I'm going to end up with that lovely, super thin uh, petal. But I will be leaving uh, the sort of chunk in the leaf. I'm going to use the iron to get that nice sort of smooth surface. A little bit more just in that last one down there. And then this, I'm just going to lay down in that middle bit. You know, and having your leaves slightly different in terms of weight. If some you use it a pinch more, it's not going to matter too much. So I'm just going to wiggle, no, wiggle, wiggle. I'm not going to, you know, yank, I'm just going to wiggle it very lightly, just loosening those fibres from my mat. There. Because of all of the points, I try not to take this out of the template until it's really ready to come out. I'm using that compacting technique, just with my single needle. Nice and light again, no penetration to my um, to my flat mat. But just going over and starting to compact it all down. Ready for that wire armature. I think I mentioned earlier this this is my I have to say, I think this is my favourite. I love the Buttercup. It's been one of those projects that I've been working on for a while because it, you know, it had to be right. 
I'm a bit fussy like that. <laughs> I know there are certain people now watching going, yep, yep, yes you are. <laughs> so I've worked all over it. Just starting to firm it up. Now I'm just going to go in. Still a little bit thin there for my liking. So I'm just going to pull off a little pinch more and just get that nicely evened out. And when you are adding wool, particularly to something that's already sort of felted, don't be tempted just to sort of roll yourself up a little ball and, and, and stuff it in there because you'll end up with some very distinctive lines. You just want to put the bulk of the fibre where you need to sort of backfill but just allow a little bit of frizz out into the rest of the project and you'll get a much more seamless blend. This is going to be the underside of my leaf so I'm not, I'm not terribly precious about it. You're not going to see this bit. So working all over with my single needle, I'm going to bring in Bring in the big guns. <laughs> and again, uh, particularly if you're new to felting and new to felting with the templates, um, stick to a single needle just to begin with. Um, you, I mean, you may feel confident to use a multi-tool. That's entirely your call. I'm doing this for speed. using that little compacting technique. In fact, all the needles, I think, in this are 40 spirals as well. My 40 spiral is very much a go-to for the start, the middle and the end. <laughs> I think I have the other needles just to keep it company. <laughs> so I'm going to work all over starting to really firm it up and I'm going to firm it up probably a good sort of 80 85 percent of the way because it becomes a lot harder to firm it up when you've got the wire armature in it uh, because obviously then you've got to start being careful of the wires so I'm going to do a lot of firming up before I put those wires in but you still need this loose enough that you know you can get other fibers in it this is starting to firm up quite nicely now i think one more pass over the whole thing and we'll be ready for our armature the thing with the multi-tool or the, the multi-handle is aim <laughs> It's if you're if you're using it, you need to, you know, follow the line, keep your needles in a straight line, and you know have these two follow the first one. But I have uh, in the past annihilated quite a few needles, so <laughs> there we go. And again, you know, this side. I've even got, you see some little gaps and things. That's perfectly all right because all of these subtle differences in the exaggeration of the points and everything else will, you know, they haven't got to be every single one right up to the end. If you've got a little bit that's missing, that's fine. It just gives you a slight variation on that leaf shape. So don't worry about that too much. You can get some really interesting sort of, I mean, variations on the leaves. See, I've got, I've got some gaps there. If you do get to that point and you think, oh, damn, I want to, I, I want that one filled, then grab yourself a pinch, do your fold back on the end, get it right up into that tip. Allow that frizz overlay, blend that out into the rest of your template.
but then you need to turn it over which one am I working on that one turn it over and just add a tiny little pinch back on the other side and this is the you know this is the side that has been facing the mat so this is the side that you know really has the nicer surface I do love my flat mat <laughs> So now you can see that I've backfilled that very lightly. That extra little bit on this side means that you don't have um, a sort of a ridge. Turn it back over and go for it again. And that way you'll end up, and that's how you can fill if you've got a gap and you don't and you really don't want it and you can do that okay so I'm just going to quickly go round the edges with my single nice vertical needle all the way round and because the sides of the template are so smooth and straight you can run your needle you can use it there so there's and you can see see the pittedness on this side where we've been felting and the much she said like that hairy stuff there much nicer kind of finish on the other side and that's what the flat mat gives you it really does help Okay, so I'm going to add my wire armature, which I have lost. <laughs> there we go. Oh no, that's not it. That's it. There we go. So here's my wire armature. Or it might be the other one. I don't know. I've gotten lost now. There's one, there's another. And that's going to go down in there. In fact, actually, I'm going to use this one. Pop your, pop your armature down in. Now, I'm not going to use glue. Um, I'm just going to use fiber but you can if you wanted to use a little bit I recommend super glue gel because you get a little bit of working time with it but I don't know if you can see there's the armature and the trick with the armature is for it not to be right on the outside of anything you want to make sure that you've got um, you can get fibres around it otherwise your wires will just poke out the side you could just put one wire straight up the middle you don't have to do these it's, it's not necessary unless you actually want to curl and you know have a very definitive curl on these side leads so there we go and all I would do now is just grab very light pinch hold it down and you want a fine needle for this and you want to make sure that you get some fibers inside that loop and then either side of it and that is really going to help anchor that wire in place there will be some movement in the wire if you're just using fibers to hold it in place is the top of my let's see if I can turn that round so you can see it's green wire on green fluff so I do apologize but there's the top of my wire let's get some in the middle a little teeny dot of glue will stop the wire from moving obviously if it's pulled it will move but In that instance, what I would do 
is perhaps fill up this bit with wool, this bit with wool. Put a little couple of dots of glue in the gaps. Wait and let it dry and then just go back over it. Because the one thing that I have um, come to realise is that with the glue, if you if you try to wire the template and you just have the wire and you don't hold it down with any fluff, you've then got to glue it and then you've got to sit there like this <laughs> whilst the glue dries. So just putting down a little tuft of wool, you know, if you want to use glue, just put down a little tuft of wool up there, little tuft of wool down at the bottom and then you can put a few dots of glue in here, leave it to dry, then come back and use these fibres to sort of backfill. So I'm just going to work over covering in these, covering in these wires. And again, light little stabs. We don't want to start poking fibres out the, the front of our project. I'm going to cover just that little top bit. Like so. That's two covered. I'm going to do exactly the same for this last one. And if you feel that you know this is a bit a bit fiddly or you're not happy, you can always make this one just a little bit shorter. Um, particularly if you've got the armature assistant set. Uh, there are five different sizes which cover everything from 5mm up to 55mm. Uh, there we go. That's our last one almost in. Make sure that's not too close to the edge. I'm going to add in just a pinch more. There. Now what I would do is just work over the entire thing just for a minute or two more. Now I've got a little bit of a wire showing there, but to be honest, I'm not massively fussed because as I said before, this is gonna be on the underside. So if the wire's just there to support, if this was something that you were gonna see both sides of this leaf, then I would say, you know, absolutely go back and you know backfill it a little bit more. Let's see if I can just use this for a minute and do this a little bit quicker. You do have to be very very careful now your wires are in there, your armature rather. And if you do get your needle stuck just a little bit of just ease it out and ease it out and I have found that spiral needles um, do uh, do that a lot yeah I've got see that I'm stuck in my wire just a little bit of a jiggle and away it comes and the spiral needles I find do that easier obviously because they're a spiral shape so nice and light I think that's about as much as I dare with my multi-tool. 
and then I'm going to turn it over and look at look at this side look at that finish so I'm just going to go back very very lightly that first barb or two on my needle all over and that's pretty much it finished there so I'm just going to use the other side the sort of the hook of my needle just lightly push it out the template from the other side and then just grab and pull and look at that shape it's a really really beautiful shape leaf and because it's got I'm not going to bend it now because I'm going to iron it but because it's got those wires in you may even be able to use a 26 gauge wire I've used a 24 but a 26 doubled over and twisted would probably be more than adequate for this it's not a you know, it's not a, a lot of weight in this leaf, but look at that. It's so pretty. <laughs> this one, as I said before, the wiring hole has been lined up so that the wire will go straight up there. And again, I would use my 35 mil section of the armature assistant to make a wire for that. Or, you know, don't put wires in them. If you're doing particularly the brooch that I did, I just used, I think it was this leaf, and I just put the buttercup like that, and there were no wires. You know, they didn't, well, they didn't need to be, but there, that's how I did that. And if you were going to use the big leaf with the buttercup head and you know have a brooch like that again you wouldn't wire it but we're doing the big project the other tutorial my other video will show you how to make the brooch uh, in more detail so there's leaf one I'm going to make four of these and then I'm going to make two of these or I might make one of those and one just using that bit you make the um, assortment of leaves and shapes that, that you want but obviously do think that you can use you know you can wire it up here use that 25 mil armature part and it's just a single loop a single loop of wire straight down at that wiring hole and you just use that section so by doing this it just offers so many potential variations and a more realistic finish to your project so I'm going to carry on and make the rest of these leaves and the small leaves off of camera and then I'm going to come back and we're going to start um, well we're going to start by ironing and I'm going to show you that little process and then we can start our assembly I've been and finished all of my leaves so I've made four of the large ones and two of the smaller ones so I made this one from this template and I made this one from just the top part of that template so I'd give it some variation and don't forget if you are doing the put all the wool in and then put the wire on top and backfill a little bit then give your um, leaves different orientation so have the template that way sometimes and then that way so you'll have lots of different variations so that's everything that I'm going to be using I might only use three I might use four I don't know we'll see how the build goes the next thing that I'm going to do with all of these parts is iron them the petals I'm going to iron so that they're nice and thin the leaves I'm going to iron just to get that really nice kind of smooth surface but I don't actually want to take the chunk out of these leaves I want them to be um, I want them to be a little bit thicker 
you see on this one they're not paper thin so that's the next step will be to iron everything up and then we can begin assembly of the flower head I've got my iron it's turned up uh, maximum heat and maximum steam this is how I um, I do these but if you are ironing for the first time if you want to put I don't know some kitchen towel or something down and then over your project it will protect your ironing board if you put something underneath um, a tea towel or something a little bit of cloth uh, this is my I only ever iron petals ironing board <laughs> so, so I don't mind but I'm going to start with the petals and if you've not ironed before your wall when you you just want pressure so I'm going to press it down just a tiny little bit of a wiggle and then lift turn it over pressure a little bit of a wiggle and lift and I do that a couple of times on each side and I'll get a close-up of a, a before and after but look at that there's your before and after it makes it does make such such a difference I'm going to do the, the three petals so just pressure and a wiggle pressure and a wiggle and there we go look how thin that is see if it will focus no we won't focus there we go how thin that is so when we want to come to do the the leaves we are going to it's sort of the same process but we're not going to add that much pressure what we're going to do is just rest the iron on top and just glide it over rest the iron on top and just glide it over so there's really just a little bit of pressure and that's it because i want to keep this thickness in the leaf so i would do that with all of my leaves getting one of the small ones nothing in the way of pressure just a light glide over the surface and there we go i'm going to carry on and finish up all the rest of my leaves and then we're going to come back and we can begin the assembly of our beautiful buttercup all of my leaves and uh, petals have been ironed and the next thing that I would do just to help neaten things up if you see when you iron you are going to get some sort of frizzy bits and all I do is I go around you need your smallest teeniest tiniest snippiest pair of scissors <laughs> And you don't want to cut into it, but you just want to go round and take off. These are um, tonic Jim Holtz or Tim Holtz. And I really do like these scissors. They're so comfortable. They've got a real nice smooth motion. And you just nip just the real frizzy bits and it will just neaten it all up like that and then you'll end up with a beautifully trimmed petal there we go okay that's everything done now what we're going to do is assemble the buttercup head and then we're going to tape the stems of the leaves and get everything assembled but for this next part I'm going to be using another 24 gauge wire 
Uh, I wouldn't recommend a 26 or higher if uh, you're wiring the daisy, uh, daisy, the buttercup stem. I would suggest a 24, maybe even a 22, but I think that might be a bit overkill. A 24, I think, is pretty decent. You start by taking your three petal cluster and you're going to need your awl and what we're going to do is we're going to put a little hole here and a little hole here very close together probably only about five mil apart but I'm just going to start you can see just making making that first little hole there. Then what you're going to do is fold your 24 gauge wire, but don't fold it completely in half. Just give yourself a bit of a step. And you want quite a thin loop at the top, like so. And then Start with the longer of your two ends and just pop that through the hole that you've made there. I'm just going to slide it up this a little bit so it's not going to go everywhere. Then about, about five mil over, make your other hole. there and then slide your petal back down and then pop the other side of your wire through and having that step will actually save you <laughs> a lot of faffing I've I had to faff a lot if you have them the same length so once you've got your wire through both of your little holes then just bring it across to the back cross them over and just bring them out to the side like that so you can see the one that's on this side coming across this way and the one's on this side going across that way and that's all we want to do just put it nice and tight so you've got that little catch there and that's all we want to do for that for right now just get those wires straight out to the side then we get our two petal cluster and remember that the center bar is offset. We want to make sure that the center bar, that the petals come up from the center bar. We don't want them drooping down onto your two lower petals. We want them up like that. Then grab your lightest felting needle and holding it in place I'll show you on the close-up camera you see this section here that's your middle there so that's the bit that we're going to be going round and round and round so lay it down the right orientation for your petals see mine are a bit offset but that doesn't matter it's just the way the wires are holding it. So you've got to lay that down there. Just a few stabs and at this point I am going right the way through using all my needle. I'm just going around like 
like that and that's as much as I want to do and then I just want to tickle it off the mat and now I'm going to go round and round and round <laughs> and you'll see that it will start forming that little centre and once you've gone round two or three times just lift it from the mat and go round again adjustment there that's all that there is to creating that center is just going round in the middle like that so once you've got your your center defined want to bring these petals in a little bit more there we go it will start sitting like a proper buttercup isn't that cute right so once we've done that you will have quite a hairy bottom <laughs> So the next bit that I'm going to do is just get this wire sorted out. So bring it back and just hold on to your buttercup and just give a couple of tight twists at the top and then twist off lightly down the bottom. You want that real nice tight twist right up near the top because you don't want a droopy flower. There we go, there's our buttercup head done. Now you can, if you want very, very lightly, I mean first barb lightly, go all over the back and just tap back in those fibers. You can also just give it a little bit of a shave. And again, it's the underside, so we can be a little forgiving. <laughs> there, it's just neatened it up. And then I'm just going to scrumple a little bit, just you know, make those petals a little bit more scrumply. Okay, that's how. You assemble that flower head. The next thing we're going to do is just florist tape up all the wires. I'm just cutting myself off a little bit of florist tape. This is the moss green florist tape as we're using moss green wool. We have some florist tapes on the site and we try to match the colours as close as we can to our walls. And... For those of you who haven't used florist tape before, you cut yourself off a piece and you hold one end and you pull and stretch. And as you pull and stretch, the surface of the tape changes and it becomes tacky to itself. And then, let me just neaten up that edge. In order to wrap, just hold it down and I generally sort of hold it up onto my flower head because I'm going to come back in and just nip this off with the scissors but it makes it easier to hold it. Bring it round and back on itself and then lock it over and once it's locked on itself then you can just wind it all the way down 
your wires this wire isn't going to be this long so I'm going to stop there and make that off and if you wanted a thicker stem I think the other one that I did was a little bit thicker you can wrap an extra layer I think I'm going to go with a thin one so what I'm going to do is come back in at the top and just nip that untidy bit off and just sort it like that so I've done my flower I'm going to just take the bottom bit that's a flower in the middle I don't need that uh, I have just cut this to from just on the underside of the flower I've cut it it nine centimeters 90 mil so probably give yourself sort of 10 centimeters something like that what I will now do is go through and tape up all of the ends or all of the wires on each of the leaves just a single I'm not going to do a double wrap or anything there, there's the next one done, it's very very quick just come back in up the top and nip it off so I'm going to carry on and do that for all of the rest of my leaves and then it's the home stretch, it's the fun part, we get to assemble our beautiful buttercup. All my stems are now taped up and I haven't necessarily gone right to the ends on all of them. This, it's worth pointing out, I think that it, this will depend on what you're going to do with this project. If you are going to do a cluster like this and I border this at the bottom and bent the wires so that it would fit into one of our drilled out logs. If you are just putting them into maybe a little vase or something like that then you know you'll nip off your wires however long you're going to need them to be and if when you're making the leaves you feel like you want an extra length of wire then before you do this taping just grab obviously I've taped all of mine but just grab an extra wire hold it across the other one and just wind it down like that then come back to this extra bit at the top bring it over and just cross it the other way like that and you'll get a good a good kind of grip on your wire and then you can just tape over all of that and you've got you know a much longer wire so there we go as these are sort of ground level leaves I'm not going to make them too long at all but the first thing that I'm I would do for this is I'm going to use this log and I'm going to get this one to sort of match this one I want a sort of matching pair I guess so I'm going to look at where my flowers are and here is the bit where it meets the log so I want this one to be around the same height so about here and you can grab my trusty sharpie you can just make 
a little mark on there so you know which I just used a green sharpie on green tape <laughs> so now I can't see it let's try that take two let's see where are we probably about there that will do I'm gonna bend it <laughs> That's where my leaves are going, about there. And what I like to do is start with the bigger leaves. And I'm going to bring them off just about there, I think. And all I'm going to do for now is just twist them together. Like that. And don't forget that this needs to leave enough room for several leaves so if you want that much sticking out of the top of the leaves then you need to start the leaves just a little bit further down and grab another another leaf and put that around the same height let me get my mat back it'll be easier to see it on a lighter surface and then I'm just going to take that and wrap it round Oops, so and you can see that you can start getting some really nice curves I'm going to overlap those two and then come in with my third large leaf just a little bit higher I think and wrap that all the way down now that's where you start seeing it come together bend those tips that and give myself a nice because you've got these wires in there you know you really can get some great I mean I can bring this up so that that section is up the center and this one is all kinds of crazy angles like that so I think three Three large ones might actually do it and then I'm going to bring in one of my smaller ones and I'm just going to slot it in and bring it right down into the center and wrap that one off And then I'm going to curl that quite severely, like that. And then I'm going to bring in my other one. I really, really love these leaves. They're so pretty. You get some really gorgeous shapes with them. Let's see what's going on here. I think I could do with another one over there so I'm going to put this one over here a little bit further out and wrap and the nice thing about the florist wires is you you know you can unwrap them rewrap them however you like there that's that's my little leaf cluster I love playing with the leaves get some really cool curves and movement movement in the leaves look at that there we go how sweet is that one final thing that you can do uh, particularly on this color wool the moss colored wool uh, is you can use a green sharpie 
and just give yourself a little bit of a line up through some of your leaves and it will just add a touch of shading don't go too heavy with it I mean I don't I'm doing this pretty randomly but you could have a look at what the veining on other cut leaves actually looks like but just a nice soft you can see just look at the, the way that that just softly shades it and if you were to try and put that shading on with um, with wool I, st I struggle I would struggle with that so there instant little bit of depth and texture and this is your bog standard green sharpie there don't want to do too much sometimes less is more <laughs> so there we go that's the cluster made and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend I'm going to nip off these really big bottom ones there and then I'm going to grab my pliers and I'm just going to bend these back up, give it a bit of a squish. Oops, like that. And then that sort of U bend. The logs that we have have got a 9mm hole. Ta da! <laughs> God, that was more luck than judgment. <laughs> There we go, ta-da, finished. But no, there, there is the buttercup. And you can obviously put this into um, various vases and little jars. I think as I said before, you can make a little brooch. There's the other one there's the little flower head there we go some a nice little cluster of beautiful buttercups so that is the buttercup project um, I have said it many times I think it is absolutely my my favorite it's so sweet it's such a beautiful summery make and it's been an absolute joy to do that's it that's the buttercup project uh, if you have any questions do feel free to shoot me a message do pop over to our facebook group that's uh, such a fun and fluff filled group uh, it's www.facebook.com slash groups slash mums makery Please do also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. Just hit that subscribe button followed by that little bell and that will notify you when we upload more videos. Once again, thank you very much for spending your time with me and I wish you all a very crafty day. Mm -hmm.